From exclusive items to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Chinese takeout in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. Here are all the menu items you'll find in a UK Chinese takeaway that you might not find in the US. Here is all of the Chinese takeout we got at our local spot that you might not be able to find in the UK. We'll start with the appetizers. In the UK, it's pretty common when you order a Chinese to order a few starters and you kind of eat them alongside your meal. One thing to point out, almost all of these are beige and I think that's gonna be a bit of a theme as we go throughout this episode. A lot of British Chinese food is just kind of beige fried stuff and we love it. We'll start with an exception to the beige rule with crispy seaweed. It's actually got a misleading name because this isn't seaweed. It's shredded cabbage, which is then deep fried. It's always aggressively salty. Sometimes you get a little bit of kind of like fish flakes sprinkled on top. I think this one is basically just fried cabbage with some salt powder on it. When we had a Chinese takeaway at home, it would pretty much be the only green thing on our plates. And here's what we got for our exclusive appetizers, starting with the steamed dumplings. That's so good, I love a dumpling. Another pretty iconic starter is a chicken satay skewer. They will take a piece of chicken, put it on a skewer, grill it up in a kind of satay sauce, which is mostly peanuts, and then serve it to you there. We also have a bit of additional satay sauce for dipping as well. These are great. They're always like a little bit dry. I think that's why you have to have the sauce on the side as well. Next we have the scallion pancake, which literally looks like a cut up little pancake. I'm gonna take a taste. Yeah, that's really tasty. I wanna dip this in something though. I'm like getting the urge to dip. When I think of a British Chinese takeaway, this might be one of the main dishes that comes to mind. These are sweet and sour chicken balls. So the sweet and sour bit actually just refers to the sauce that it's served with. It's basically just a piece of chicken, which is then battered and deep fried. Mm -hmm. Now these vary in quality a lot from restaurant to restaurant. If chicken balls aren't your thing, then we also have the option of a prawn ball. Now instead of a piece of chicken, they take an entire prawn, batter it and deep fry it. Kind of like a tempura prawn, but I think a lot heavier on the batter. We've been locked in a debate here as to if there's any difference between prawn and shrimp. It seems like sometimes they're used interchangeably, but maybe they are actually different species. I don't know if Nico, you have any thoughts on uh, the differences between prawn and shrimp. There is actually a difference between shrimp and prawns. It's not just linguistic. Shrimp are more common in the US and tend to be smaller with a more savory flavor when compared to prawns. Charlie is saying that when he's had it in the past, it's been like a sort of prawn paste mashed up into a ball. Whereas these ones are just whole prawns inside some batter. So I feel like I've got a better deal here. This is a fried wonton. It's so cute, it looks like a little flower. That is so good and crunchy. Next up, I did want to take a look at British wontons. I know you can get these in America, but I thought there might be some differences. So these ones are not crispy, these are steamed. Pretty tasty, not something that I would commonly order. Moving on, we have the crab rangoons. These are like kind of a meme now for some reason. I don't know why these have like a spike in popularity just like in general, but this is what they look like. Kind of similar to a wonton, but bigger. Let's crack this bad boy open. Oh, gorge. The filling is just crab and cream cheese. I get it, I think. I get why it's so popular. This is a banger. When you talk about your beige food, Mount Rushmore, this has got to be up there. This is sesame prawn toast. You have four beige foods immortalized forever in stone. Now, if you order a full English breakfast in the UK, you're likely to find some fried bread on there. Basically what Chinese restaurants in the UK have done is elevate fried bread by putting a layer of prawn paste in the middle and then topping it with loads of sesame seeds. These are delicious, I love these. Moving on, we have the spare ribs. I have to admit, I've never had a spare rib. It's not something I've ever ordered. These have bones. That's literally a bone. I thought I ordered the boneless spare ribs, but I guess I ordered the spare ribs with the Peking duck sauce and they look and smell amazing. So I am gonna take a bite anyway. Yeah, that's literally so good. That is so good. Why don't I order ribs? <laughs> that's so yummy. Now I was shocked when I saw these as an exclusive in this episode, but our next one is prawn crackers. These are another thing that you'll see on pretty much every UK Chinese takeaway order. Even if you don't order them, often they'll just throw you in a bag for free. They're just great for like mopping up bits of sauce or something. You can also dip them in the sweet and sour sauce and you kind of get this crackling. I really almost hope that we've made a mistake in this script and that you can in fact find these on Chinese takeout menus in the US because they're great and you guys are missing out. The last two items we wanted to talk about were chips. We have two versions here that you'll find on pretty much every British Chinese takeaway menu. We have regular chips and we have salt and pepper chips. 
As I'm sure some of you might know, British people don't tend to have the most adventurous palates in the world, and there's usually a lot of demand for chips. Same with Indian restaurants and Chinese restaurants. Basically, they're just catering to the demand of the British public. Also, it's very common to pay your chips with curry sauce. So curry sauce in this sense, it probably has some of the similar flavorings that you would find in like a katsu curry type sauce. I would refer to this type of curry sauce as like chip shop curry sauce. And that kind of applies to whether it's Chinese takeaways or fish and chip shops. Then we also have the salt and pepper chips. Now salt and pepper seasoning is quite common at Chinese restaurants in the UK. That refers to a seasoning mix, which is comprised of salt, white pepper, and Chinese five spice. They kind of take that, base it around it. They'll make chips, cook them most of the way, and then finish them usually in a wok with some chili peppers, some onion, and some spring onion. These are delicious. Now I will defend salt and pepper chips, but they were kind of at the center of that TikTok controversy around British Chinese food, which honestly is kind of why we've made this episode. I also got an order of fries. Obviously these are not an exclusive just to US Chinese takeout places, but I just wanted to show what they looked like here versus in the UK. Very bland. I don't even think these have salt on them, which is kind of interesting. This is definitely one of those Chinese takeout menu items that feels very catered to a different kind of palette. I would say that I do not see people ordering french fries pretty much ever from a Chinese food place. Something like this is probably for like kids who are picky eaters, which I definitely was. I was ordering white rice and chicken wings from Chinese takeout as a child because I didn't want to try anything else, but that's what this feels like. Something to please the children. I'm calling Harry a child right now. <laughs> Something to please the child. <laughs> Another British Chinese takeout staple is a crispy aromatic duck pancake. Now it sits somewhere kind of between an appetizer and a main course. Cause I mean, if you gave me enough of this, I would just eat that as my main. It can be kind of expensive. So I feel like some people just get a little bit to share. So it was neatly packaged for us, but it comes in a few different components. Obviously we have the crispy aromatic duck itself. These little crispy bits of skin are amazing. We have the pancakes. We have hoisin sauce, and then you have your vegetables. In this case, we have some julienne cucumber and spring onion. I'll, uh, I'll do a little demo assembly here. I feel like everyone's got different ways of assembling, so don't judge mine. Start with a pancake, get as much of that crispy skin as possible. A couple of bits of cuke, some sprunions. Hoisin is like kind of a plum based sauce, so it's nice and sweet. Works really well with the savory. Have some fun with it, you know? Beautiful. These are sensational. I've not actually had one of these in a while. Next, let's talk about the exclusive soup options we have. This is vegetable bean curd soup. I should mention that I never order soup when I get Chinese takeout, but I, it's obviously gonna vary from person to person. Some people like a little soup appetizer. I'm not one of those people. Although I love soup in general. It mostly just smells like broccoli to me. It doesn't have a super strong flavor. I feel like the broth isn't as rich as I wanted it to be, but the tofu is really tasty. Next, we have the hot and sour. I've never had hot and sour soup before, so I am interested to try it. This smells a lot like sweet and sour sauce, so I assume that that's what's in here. I'm seeing vegetables, what I think is tofu. It smells really good, so let's take a little slurp. The texture is not my favorite. I think it's like got the texture of a sauce to me, so like sipping it like a soup doesn't feel right, but it does taste good. And lastly, we have the egg drop soup, which I feel like is a pretty popular soup when you're ordering Chinese takeout here. The one we got here is chicken and sweet corn, which I think is kind of like the archetypal Chinese takeaway soup here in the UK. I won't necessarily go out of my way to order one of these, although I do think they're pretty tasty. One thing to point out though is the texture of these, because if you're not used to it, it can really take you by surprise. There's something about a chicken and sweet corn soup in particular that's just so comforting. We actually do have a corn and chicken soup here too. I just don't think it's as popular as something like a hot and sour soup. In the UK, we have a lot of fried rice dishes. These probably could be ordered as your main meal, but I would say in the UK, they're more traditionally ordered alongside a meat or a vegetable dish and kind of enjoyed together. We picked out a couple of options. Here is the house special fried rice. And then also we have the Singapore fried rice. I just wanted to find out what makes this the house special fried rice because usually it will include a variation of kind of things mixed in with it. There's little pieces of chicken, pork, and prawn in here, as well as some spring onions. The Singapore fried rice seems to actually have the same fillings. I'm seeing these little tiny shrimps in them, I'm seeing bits of chicken and pork as well. But I think this is supposed to be a slightly spicier fried rice, so let me give this one a quick try. Not like overpoweringly hot, but definitely more of a chili kick to that one. Moving on to our fried rice option, we only have one, and this is the Young Chow fried rice. It's basically made with a bunch of different protein options. Looking down right now, I just see spare ribs, I see chicken, I see shrimp, 
looks kind of good. I've never thought of eating multiple meats at one time like this. I would argue and say that fried rice in general is like a popular food here. I make it all the time, like it's such an easy dish to make at home and it's definitely popular at Chinese takeout places, but for some reason, we only had one exclusive option at this particular location. I'm gonna try to get a bite with every single meat on it. Oh, there it is. It is a very odd taste when it's three different meats at once, but it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. Now, chow mein has to be one of the most popular dishes in the UK. I think surveys have actually placed it as the number one dish. It's pretty versatile. So usually, again, this would be an accompaniment to maybe like a meat dish as well, or you could kind of just eat this on its own. Personally, chicken chow mein is my favorite, and I think probably most Brits' favorite too, but you can also just get plain, vegetable, or various other toppings. Here we have the chicken chow mein. It's effectively just a stir-fried noodle dish. Chow mein definitely is a thing here. It just isn't a thing at this particular restaurant. I'm sorry, I have to repeat myself so much. Let's talk noodles. This is the pan-fried noodle. This is the lo mein. And this is the Singapore mei fun. Opening this up, I knew exactly what it smelled like. It smells like curry, so there has to be some sort of curry element in it. It smells really good, so I think I'm gonna take a bite. I've never had this before. And it also looks like they use a smaller noodle than in either of these two dishes. It's like those thin, is it like vermicelli noodles? Vermicelli noodles. That's my daughter's name. <laughs> this dish also has multiple proteins going on. I'm seeing chicken and I'm seeing shrimp. I don't know if there's anything else underneath, but that's what I see right now. The flavor's pretty good. I don't know if I like vermicelli noodles. I think this is my first time having them. They're just such a thin noodle. I like something chewier, like the ones that come in the lo mein. Once you get past the rice and the noodle portions, the Chinese takeaway menus in the UK are usually categorized by protein. So you'll choose either chicken, pork, beef, or anything else, and then you kind of choose a sauce that goes with that. For example, we can get sweet and sour chicken, but you can also get sweet and sour pork and sweet and sour beef. From each protein category, we're gonna show you a couple of either interesting or unique food items. Let's start with chicken. Here I have lemon chicken. This is another one of those that's probably gonna be found on pretty much every Chinese takeaway menu in the UK. The sauce is pretty good though. It's lemony, a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. Then here we have the Kung Po chicken. You might also see this referred to as Kung Pao chicken with that A in the middle there, but it's the same dish. It's basically not too dissimilar to sweet and sour chicken that you might find on the menu at a UK Chinese takeout. It's these dredged and fried pieces of chicken in a sweet and spicy sauce. Kung Pao chicken, I think traditionally also would have some peanut in it. In the US, it's exactly the same. Our menus are categorized by the protein type, but a lot of the dishes are really different. So you don't always get the same sauce for say a seafood dish as you would a chicken dish. Let's start with the chop suey, which I have never had before, but I'm very interested. You can get it with any protein. We got ours with chicken. And here's what that looks like. The chicken looks a little pale. I feel like this is a surprisingly bland dish compared to a lot of other chicken dishes I've had from Chinese takeout. It's definitely not my favorite. Moving on to the sesame chicken. This was like a fan favorite. I was told I had to get this. I'm not a sesame chicken orderer, but my friends and coworkers are. Yeah, it's so good. Next we have orange chicken, which as the name suggests has orange in the sauce. And this particular place uses like the orange peel to like season the chicken. I've definitely had a lot of orange chicken in my day, particularly the frozen kind from Trader Joe's. So it is pretty popular. It's not a spicy sauce. It's definitely just like a sweet tangy sauce, but it's very delicious. And last but not least, we have General Tso's chicken, which is my personal favorite thing to order from Chinese takeout. You'll see it on a lot of Chinese restaurant menus here in the US, but it's not exactly authentic Chinese food. Shocker. General Tso was a real general from the Hunan province who supposedly enjoyed eating a dish similar to General Tso's chicken, although this modern American version would probably be unrecognizable to him. The dish was actually created in the 1950s by a chef named Peng Chang Kui. When he immigrated to New York in 1973, he altered his recipe to cater to the American palate, which in this case means he made it sweeter. Peng Chang Kui called it General Tso's chicken because he and General Tso are from the same town. Then we're on to the beef options. Now, firstly, I have to shout out what might be my favorite British Chinese takeaway dish. 
which is crispy shredded beef with chili. One thing I've got to say, talking a lot about textures and crispiness here, what you will often find from Chinese takeaways in the UK, they actually break a little hole in the plastic container. This is probably the first thing that I'm ordering when I'm ordering a Chinese takeaway. What they do is they get these little slivers of beef, dredge them usually in something like corn flour, fry them up, and then toss them in this lovely sweet and spicy chili sauce. I just love the variation you get. Like some of them will be slightly chewier, some of them will be crispier. Flavors are great. Next up, we have some Sichuan beef. Now, I really enjoyed hearing Tiaran talking about the Chinese Sichuan style flavors. of cooking with the peppercorn. When we were doing the US versus China series, go check that out. But I think Sichuan food tends to be pretty spicy. And they also use Sichuan peppercorns, which give you this kind of like numbing effect in your mouth. The beef here also isn't fried. It's more just like pieces of braised beef. I'm kind of intrigued to uh, give this a try, although I'm worried about my spice tolerance. Yeah, it's pretty spicy. It's very tasty, very flavorful. And then finally, we've got some beef in black bean sauce. I'd say this is a pretty common one as well. And this is one that you can also get in different meat varieties. So you can get this with the chicken, with the pork, anything else. Comes with loads of peppers as well. There's some chili in there, onions. It's a nice, like, very rich sauce. That's really good. That with some rice, beautiful pairing. We'll often actually get this one. This is one of my favorites. I feel like I've said that about a lot of things. I think I just ordered too much Chinese takeaway. There's a variety of beef dishes that you can get at Chinese food places here in America. Today, we got the Mushu beef. So it's got cabbage, some mushrooms, obviously the beef. Let's take a taste. The beef in that is really, really tender and delicious. I actually really like this. Seafood is also a pretty common option on UK Chinese takeaway menus. A lot of the options you will find have similar sources to some of the beef or pork options, but there are also a few unique ones as well. Firstly, we have salt and pepper squid. You might remember the salt and pepper chips from earlier. It's basically crispy squid cooked in that same seasoning. Sometimes this might be found under appetizers. Today, they had it in their main section, so we're going with that. I love crispy squid. The way that they kind of like cut it with this crosshatch pattern, particularly in Chinese cuisine, gives it a really nice texture. It's not that chewy. It's really flavorful, not super fishy. Just to illustrate that sometimes the sauces are the same in different parts of the menu, this is the pepper and black bean sauce again, but this time with squid. Then we have a couple of prawn options as well. Here we have the king prawns in oyster sauce and king prawns with cashew nuts. While we have the prawn here in its uh, unballed form, <laughs> let me get one of those out. Nico, how does that look? Is that a prawn or a shrimp? Or neither? That prawn kind of looks shrimpy to me. It certainly does not look like a king prawn. That's not the king of the prawns. In the US, shrimp is definitely the most popular seafood option when you get Chinese takeout. We have a couple of shrimp options here, the Szechuan shrimp and a seafood delight, which has shrimp in it. And I'm guessing other delightful sea creatures. That's just shrimp. Is that what is delightful? Or do they mean delight is like you get a bunch of veggies with it? Let's just try the Szechuan shrimp. It smells as spicy as I think it's gonna be. This is probably the biggest shrimp I've seen today. I swear I've eaten with a fork before. Oh no, it's tail on! It's spicy, not as spicy as I thought it was gonna be, but I'm sure the more you eat it, the spicier it gets. But that sauce is really, really good. And the shrimp is awesome, even though it's got tails on it. Take the tails off. We also got a shrimp egg roll. Harry really wanted me to try this and I'm glad he mentioned it because I've never had a shrimp egg roll before. Just pork, that's what I get every time. Do you see that one little tiny piece of shrimp? I feel like it tastes slightly different than the pork, not just because the meat is different. Another item you'll see in a lot of Chinese restaurants in the US is egg foo young. It's an omelet made with vegetables, a protein and a stir fry sauce. Whoa, baby. This is a big omelet. It smells really good. It doesn't just smell like egg. It smells like a lot of good stuff. It needs a lot more salt, actually. I wonder if you're supposed to like add sauce or something on top. I think we're actually supposed to add this gravy to it. So let me add that and see if it helps with the salt factor. This feels very UK core right now. Me pouring this gravy all over food. Better? Still not great. I don't know if I like this. Yeah, egg for young is interesting, but I'm not sure British people would really be going in and kind of ordering just an omelet from a Chinese takeaway. I'm not sure how well that would take off over here. It's time for a sauce talk. Sauce talk. If there was ever a time to do sauce talk, it's now. So in front of me here, I have all the sauces that were on offer at the restaurant we ordered from. 
I'm gonna go through them now, explain what they are, what they might be paired with, and give them a try. We'll start with a slightly infamous one. It's British curry sauce. The British went around the world, took spices from everybody, and this is somehow the only thing that we came up with. Brits love curry sauce, or at least this iteration of curry sauce. There's definitely like some heat there. Not a lot, it's quite a gentle spice flavor. There's something about the texture that is just really satisfying. That really gloopy, like cornstarchy texture goes excellently with chicken balls. You'll often see Brits drizzling this onto chips. Chips and curry sauce is a big thing in the UK. Or you'll just see it drizzled across your entire succulent Chinese meal. I will say Joe really loved that. When we did our fish and chip shop food tours episode, it's not just the Brits who can enjoy it. Then we have another iconic UK Chinese takeout sauce, which is sweet and sour. Depending on where you get it from, the color again will vary. It's a pretty well balanced one. The first thing that hits your tongue is the sour, then it pretty quickly mellows out and you get a nice sweet aftertaste. Again, I think this is kind of intended to be paired with the chicken balls or prawn balls or something else like that. But I do think a lot of Brits will just kind of coat their entire meal in it. While we're on the subject of these iconic sauces, I also have to shout out the polystyrene cups. I think Americans might call that styrofoam, but these are really iconic. This is the standard delivery vessel for your sauces. The restaurant that we ordered from had two chili options. Firstly, we have sweet chili. Brits love sweet chili. This is on the menu at a lot of restaurants. And then the next one we have is chili oil. I'd say this one isn't super commonly found on like UK Chinese takeout menus. Next up we have the black bean sauce. Now this is the same sauce that you might have seen in some of the dishes earlier. Then we've got two more sauces. First up we have hoisin sauce. Now this is most commonly paired with the crispy duck that you'll find on UK Chinese takeout menus. It's a very thick, dark brown sauce. Again, gloopy sauces, we love it. I think the main ingredient in hoisin sauce or one of the main ingredients is plum. So you get this real sweetness from it, which works very well with the savory duck meat and other things on the menu. And then finally, we have barbecue sauce. Now, I was a little bit confused when I saw this on the menu because barbecue sauce in the kind of Western sense, so like a Texas barbecue sauce, for example, does not look like this. And I think that's what I was expecting. But I think what's actually been delivered is much more of a Chinese style barbecue sauce. What this one makes me think of is more when you eat like a char siu pork bun, for example, because while it is barbecue-y, it's still got some sweetness to it. There's Chinese five spice in here. But if you're expecting like Heinz barbecue sauce, that's not it. I think out of all of these ones, the one I will reach for the most will be the sweet and sour sauce. It's because I'll almost always order the chicken balls when I'm making a Chinese takeout order in the UK and one of these will come with it. Yeah, I think in the UK, it's kind of just the definitive sauce, closely followed by curry. I think that's one of the biggest differences between Chinese takeout in the US and the UK. Our takeout comes with the sauce already incorporated for the most part. You do get a mix though of tiny little sauce packets like this. So we've got soy sauce, duck sauce, which is so good. It's kind of just like a sweet sauce. We have mustard usually, which I'm not seeing here, but you do get mustard and hot sauce. I'm pretty sure there are more, but that's just what we have right now. And then we have a couple little cups of, this looks like a paste. I think that this is a little tiny container of oyster sauce. And this is just a little container of extra soy sauce, probably for dipping. If you do not have a drawer full of these sauces, I don't know what you're doing. I feel like everybody has that drawer in their house that's filled with random sauce packets like this. Now that we've covered every item individually, what I wanted to do was show you my ideal plate of British Chinese takeaway food. You might have seen these on TikTok or elsewhere as these kind of broke the internet a while ago, but I'm gonna show you my version. I need some chow mein. The amount of carbs that might end up on this plate could be alarming to some, because we're gonna go noodles. We're also gonna go rice. You know we're gonna get the salt and pepper chips involved. Then I want a healthy portion of my crispy chili beef. I'm gonna want some seaweed on here, some of this prawn toast, definitely a couple of spring rolls, and of course our prawn crackers as well. So generally speaking, this is a pretty normal plate of Chinese takeaway food for a British person, but we're not done there. The final step, of course, is to add our sauces. Yes, that sauce is plural because we're gonna be adding both the curry sauce and the sweet and sour sauce to this. And honestly, I'm not discriminating here. This is going pretty much on the entire meal. And of course, our sweet and sour sauce. Love it or hate it, that is your typical plate of British Chinese takeaway food. I think I've done a pretty good job there. British people, please feel free to agree or disagree with me in the comments below. Nico, I've got to hear your thoughts about this. Would you eat this? Let me stop you right there. Why do you guys sauce the whole plate? Like, doesn't the whole plate just then taste like that sauce? You want everything to taste exactly like that sauce? Bone app the teeth. Now let's make up an American plate of Chinese takeout with a bunch of staple foods that I think are pretty nationally beloved, I would say. 
Let's start with our sides, our little appetizers. So we'd probably throw a couple of wontons on there. I'd also do some type of roll. I would usually do an egg roll, but all we've got left are spring rolls. Next, you'd have your rice. I prefer white rice. I just think it's really easy to pair with any sort of entree. Okay, I wouldn't normally eat the full container of rice, but we're gonna keep it on the plate. We gotta get some chicken. You definitely need a side of veg, so we're gonna do broccoli, because I feel like that's literally at every single Chinese restaurant, they have broccoli on the side. If you ignore the huge mountain of white rice, I think this looks pretty appetizing. The last thing I would add to this plate is probably some lo mein, so let's do that. I didn't mention these before, but these little fried, I think they're fried noodle pieces, they come with soups. So you can just throw them in your soup, have them with your soup. They're just good to snack on. I think this looks like a pretty appetizing plate. This is probably the point where folks in the UK would douse their plate in sauce. I would do things a little differently. I really like dipping egg rolls into the duck sauce, which is this one, it's so good. And some people put sauce, I think, over their rice and stuff. So we have our white rice, our wontons, our fried noodles, some spring rolls, a side of broccoli, sesame chicken, and the lo mein, which I think this kind of sums up what a typical order from a Chinese food place would look like here in America. If it doesn't look like what you would order, sorry, babe, I don't know what to tell you. This is just what I think. I can't even believe I didn't mention it yet. You have to get a can of Coke on the side. Any soft drink really will do. I just think you need a can of soda with your Chinese takeout. It's just, it's a sensation like no other. It's, it goes together. In the UK, when we order food to be delivered, we say we're ordering a takeaway rather than ordering takeout. Also in the UK, we tend not to bother adding the words food or takeaway to the type of food we're eating. For example, if we're ordering Chinese takeout, most Brits will just say that we're having a Chinese. Same applies for maybe Indian food when you have an Indian or even a full English breakfast. In the US, we call it takeout. They obviously both mean the same thing, but that's just our preferred way of saying it. We also say Chinese food or Chinese takeout rather than just a Chinese. We also wanted to look at how each country packages it's food. In the UK, you might find your Chinese food in one of these foil boxes with a paper lid. The other most common form of packaging is one of these clear plastic tubs. And then finally, for your appetizer options, such as some spring rolls, which we've got here, they generally will just come in a paper bag. I've always seen those folded cardboard boxes in American TV shows, and they do look pretty cool, I have to say. Also, the cute little takeout boxes are something that I feel like we see a lot maybe in media when someone orders Chinese food, but they're not super, super common. Mostly the food comes in these kinds of containers which is like a black Tupperware with a clear top. These are usually reserved for the rice, maybe the lo mein, but it's not reserved for like all of the food options. These boxes were actually inspired by Japanese origami. Frederick Weeks Wilcox was the first person to introduce the paper pail box in the 19th century to carry raw oysters. He created a patent for it and called it a paper pail, which it basically is. It's like a cute little pail. In the UK and the US, portion sizes and menu items will vary slightly depending on the different restaurants that you go to. But we did want to compare a couple of standard menu items in the US and the UK to see who might be getting bigger portions. One iconic appetizer from a Chinese takeaway in the UK is the spring roll. The restaurant that we ordered from serves these in a portion size of six. In the US, spring rolls are made a little bit differently. They're made with rice paper and they have thinly sliced vegetables on the inside. This particular Chinese restaurant only gave us two, but I have ordered from some places that give you more. It just depends on where you order from. We do have egg rolls, which are kind of similar to the UK. These come in only one size as far as I know, but depending on what place you order from, they could be like a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than this. My local place, they're actually a little bit bigger than this size. In the UK, our egg fried rice only came in one size. I don't want to weigh this outside of the box, so I'm just gonna wear it in the box. This is a mountain. All of this rice just came out of this tiny little container. So this is what our fried rice looks like. At this particular restaurant, they only had one size of this fried rice, but I have seen places do small and large sizes. All right, let's weigh this mountain of rice. It's like just maxed out the scales. That's a lot of rice. We do have chicken included in that, just letting you know. And we did weigh the plate beforehand, so that's not part of this weight. 
The restaurant that we ordered from had chow mein in two different sizes, regular and large. Although the large was only available with certain varieties. So this is a chicken chow mein regular size, and this is the house special chow mein in a large size. We do have chow mein here in America, but we didn't have it at this particular restaurant. We do have pan fried noodles, which I think are similar-ish, so we're gonna weigh these. Although I feel like it might once again be slightly too heavy for the scales. Moving on to sweet and sour chicken. That is like a tried and true classic with takeout. I think that I'm supposed to sauce it myself, which isn't the norm for me. In my experience getting Chinese takeout, everything is already like sauced. You don't need to add anything. This time they came without sauce. So we're just going to add it ourselves. In the UK, our sweet and sour chicken came in one size. In the UK, this consists of little fried pieces of chicken, peppers, onions, and also pineapple. I'm getting word that I think I was supposed to dip the individual pieces into sauce and eat it like that. I've never ordered this. I just know it's a common takeout item here, but I already poured the sauce all over it. So let's just wait and see how much it is. As we mentioned before, each Chinese restaurant is unique as to how they prepare and cook their food, so it's kind of impossible to know exactly what's going into each dish. One ingredient that we did want to highlight, however, as it's commonly associated with Chinese food, is MSG, or monosodium glutamate. In 1907, a Japanese chemist named Kikunai Ikeda discovered a substance called glutamate, also known as umami. He later broke that substance down into MSG. MSG is a seasoning and food enhancer that gives a rich, savory flavor. MSG is actually very commonly found in fast foods, including Chick-fil-A, snack foods including Doritos and naturally occurs in some cheeses. MSG has been recognized as safe by the FDA several times and only contains a third of the sodium content of table salt. So why has it got such a bad rap? In 1968, the New England Journal of Medicine published a letter titled Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. In it, a doctor describes his experiences after eating at Chinese restaurants, citing symptoms like numbness in the back of the neck, general weakness, and palpitations. The blame was placed on MSG, and the Chinese restaurant syndrome myth quickly spread. The phrase even ended up in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Despite there being no evidence that MSG was dangerous, there was still a public panic around it. Chinese restaurants in particular were deemed unhealthy. Thankfully, the use of MSG is much more normalized today, although the xenophobic misinformation from the 1960s does still linger. If you Google MSG, some of the suggested search terms include things like why are Americans afraid of MSG and is MSG a neurotoxin? Short answer, no it's not. The first Chinese restaurants to appear in the UK were called eating houses. They would serve Chinese sailors who would dock in British ports. This goes as far back as the 19th century when Hong Kong was part of the British Empire. Notable locations for this included Limehouse, which is part of the East End of London and was actually where the original Chinatown was. The East End of London was particularly hit by bombing raids in the Second World War, which caused Chinatown to relocate to Soho, where it is today. The first recorded Cantonese restaurant in London was a place called Cafe, and it was opened in 1908. It was opened by a former ship's chef, a guy called Chung Kun. It was Chung Kun's son who opened a restaurant in Bayswater decades later, which might have been the kind of origin of the Chinese takeaway in London. Apparently, the food was so popular that if customers couldn't get a table, they would simply ask for the food to go. Chung Kun's restaurant Maxim had a very popular dish consisting of pork in a sweet and sour sauce called Jia Jiao. While the origins of the dish are specifically Cantonese, it just became known as Chinese food to Britons. The first known Chinese restaurant in the US was called Canton and opened in 1849 in San Francisco. The 1850s saw the appeal of the gold rush, so to escape worse conditions in China, there was a flood of Chinese immigrants in this time. Restaurants began popping up to feed Chinese workers who missed their cuisine from home, modifying their favorite dishes using ingredients that they could find in the US. In 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act forbade Chinese immigrants from coming to America. An exception was made for restaurateurs who could apply for merchant visas, which saw a boom in Chinese restaurants opening up in the 1910s. Any new restaurants that opened had to be considered high grade to be within the 1882 Act, so the owners lavishly decorated the restaurants, and by 1943, the Act was revoked. During this period, dishes such as chop suey and egg foo young were popularized across the country, especially the spread of chop suey houses. Chop suey was made from food scraps. Its name basically means leftovers. Male migrants who came over from China had little to no kitchen skills and ingredients were different from those back home, so they threw together what they could find, creating a dish that was very easy to make. Chop suey was a popular Chinese-American dish up until the 1960s, after which General Tso's chicken kind of became the new popular thing. Also during this time, Chinese food began to be preserved in cans for pickling and freezing because the Great Depression meant that people were looking for food that was more affordable. 
Popularizing the chop suey houses was a turning point for integrating Chinese cuisine into American culture, even if the dish was eventually less popular. Chinese food increased in popularity in the UK during and after World War II. Recipes for Chinese cakes, as well as other simple Chinese recipes, were introduced to Brits by the BBC. And as some Brits returned from being stationed in the Far East, they brought back with them a taste for Chinese cuisine. An influx of Cantonese immigrants arriving from Hong Kong in the 1950s brought with it a wave of Chinese restaurants to the UK. These restaurants really blew up in popularity. The restaurants proved so popular, in fact, that Billy Butlin introduced chop suey and chips to the restaurant menus at his holiday camps. One trend that you also saw was Chinese families taking over old fish and chip restaurants. This is why you still see things like fish and chips or battered sausage and chips on the menu at some Chinese restaurants. Around 1960, the Mandarin opened in San Francisco, introducing Americans to Chinese food beyond chop suey, like hot and sour soup and pot stickers. Cecilia Chang, the owner of the restaurant, wasn't sure what food customers would want, so she added over 300 items to the menu. President Nixon's trip to China in 1972 began to normalize relations between the countries, and Americans were influenced to try more Chinese food. In 1989, the National Restaurant Association concluded that Chinese food was actually the most frequently consumed cuisine across the country, and over the next few decades, the number of Chinese restaurants went up by the thousands. In 2007, there were over 43,000. In the U.S. today, there are over 23,000 Chinese restaurants. In the 1950s, there were only 36 Chinese restaurants in the UK, but the next few decades saw that number rapidly ascend. By the late 1990s, that number had risen to over 5,000. Today, there are a little over 7,000 Chinese restaurants up and down the UK. According to a survey, Chinese food is the second most popular cuisine in the US, right behind pizza, as of June 2023. A 2001 poll said that Chinese food was British people's favorite foreign cuisine. This was backed up by another poll 20 years later, which said that 25% of Brits will still opt for Chinese as their favorite foreign cuisine. That's really good. I love duck. I think there's a direct correlation between how cute an animal is and how good it tastes, because ducks are pretty adorable, and damn are they tasty.